Hello there, my name is Rolly Z01BQD. Welcome, welcome back to what it's uh, part two of my visit with Nick Z01IU. In the last episode, with uh, uh, talking with Nick, we discussed his 80 meter four square, and we have some exciting stuff uh, for you in this episode as well. So, you know what to do pull up a chair, yeah. Grab a cup of coffee. Come on, let's go back and uh, visit Nick and see what he has in store for us. Well, tell me, Nick, this is not 80 metres, but <laughs> from this one looks to be. Uh, well, you've got a two metre two meter array here. That array's been up now, must be 15 years since Bob and I built it. Um, Bob Sutton, 1RS. We um, designed it and sent it to Lionel, V7BQH, <coughs> for the element correction factor. And then we built it. It's getting a bit beat up now. <coughs> Pardon me, the plan is this summer to take it down and refurbish it and I'm going to put it on a crank up and tilt over tower. Right. Um, but there's about 18.8 dBD gain. The uh, phasing lines are Andrew LDF 450. And the powder divider is made out of a bit of LDF 550. Right. Um, and I've done EME, um, CW and JT65 with those antennas. The elevation doesn't work anymore, but I'm more interested in um, terrestrial. Spor right. Sporadic e tropo. So here to Australia, there's no trouble at all, eh? When, when it's when open, and, yeah. brilliant. And it's very sharp too. Yeah. It's... Now, on this other tower, yep. let me zoom up on that. Tell me, what do you got on that? Um, I've got a pair of Cushcraft 13B2s, vertical. I use those for um, listening to the paging systems in VK, which are just above 148 megs. Right. And I listen... Um, and the moment I, I hear them, they're, they're just an indicator. Um, long before chat rooms started, um, I used those pages and also the FM band uh, for indications of tropo or sporadic E. The Yagi up the top is um, an M squared 28 element 432 in the middle. And that's got a masthead amplifier on it uh, as well. And the one up above is one that Bob and I just finished. It's a 58 element. 1296 Yagi with a masthead amplifier. Um, that's you did 58 elements? 58 elements. Yeah. On oh. a, on a, the boom is just under five metres long. Yeah. And um, we did the element corrections. Uh, I think VK5DJ used his calculator, Bob did, and um, came up with that. Laborious job filing all the elements. I had to go and get a vernier caliper and um, do all that. And um, those elements are mounted through um, Corby clips. Yeah. Um, ZL3RC, Roger, yeah. makes those up and they're brilliant. And the, the elements just push into them. They're a nice tight push fit and you can center them so easily. And they just screw through the boom. Um, brilliant, no interference at all. And the antenna, we don't, we don't have an analyzer, but on the 9700, we didn't have any SWR at the feed point. It was pretty much spot on at 1296-100. And so, so what have you been able to achieve on 1296 with that array then at the moment? Um, not, not yet, uh, not the, nothing this season. Um, I've right. worked a few VKs on two meters this season so far. Right. But um, with my other array, my looped element array, I've worked VK2s and 4s, numerous right. ones, many times right. on 12, and Tasmania. Um, on 1296, I work Rex 7MO and Hayden 7HH. <coughs> actually holds a distance record now. Right. First ZL VK7. And I want to work into VK3 um, this season too, permitting on 1296. Conditions yeah, are good oh, enough. That's brilliant. Oh, it'll be exciting to see and hear how yeah. that, uh, <laughs> and that I've got Yagi a, goes. I guess you're... Uh, oh yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I've also um, got a 2.4 gig um, equipment and a yep. grid pack dish which will go up in the middle of the two meter array very shortly mm. and i'll be active on 2.4 and also 3.4 gigs with a dish um with as dish. well what yeah. size dish are you anticipating the, the one i think on 3.4 is 900 right uh for memory i think it's about nine or a bit bigger than 900 yeah 
uh, in di um, across, and uh, it does work well. I've worked the boys down in Auckland on it. Beauty. Piece of cake. I've got the Icom 9700, which I bought a few months ago. Yeah. Great little radio so far. Um, I've got um, an Icom 275H, which I've had for donkey's years. And uh, I, the reason I still have that in service is I drive the amp with it, but I, it goes out of band and I'm able to listen for the paging systems from VK as um, band indicators. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, um, on top of that is a uh, 2.4 gig transverter with an old ICOM 202. I've also got an FT818, which I may use as the IF, but that's about 40 watts on 2.4. And I'm going to... Um, Try and work VK this right. season. Yeah, yeah. That, that's with you, when you get the additions on. Like the the, the yeah. tropo opening. Um, yeah. I, I really want to do that. And I've also got the 3.4 transverters on the shelf over there. It's not out at the moment. Right. But, but that um, that gears um, that transverter has been loaned to me, loaned to me by Steve uh, Z01 TPH. Right. And um, he's worked VK with it, uh, and that's. 1296 amplifier, about 60 watts output. Oh, that's um, brilliant. Hmm. I, I see something which is absolutely intriguing here, Nick. And let me uh, <laughs> zoom in. I know you, you don't know what you're going to say. <laughs> okay, tell me about it. Uh, that's an SX28A uh, that I bought off a um, fellow in Auckland. And um, um, a friend of mine, Paul, Bycroft, I just can't think of his call sign. Um, he he re, re um, capped it all for me, and uh, it goes really well. I've got the matching um, 23, I think, the speaker for it, which right. is down on the shed on another Helicraft. It's an SX25, which um, I'm actually the, the second or third owner of. Um, yeah, I was just going to tell people that's a Helicraft is for those yeah. that don't know it, and uh. Yeah, great. man, they've been around for a good long time now, haven't they? I think they? that one was made in 19... It's one of the last, 45, or somewhere around there. Yeah. And, yeah, it's amazing. I, I, I've got a uh, Sue and Vega speaker. It's not here at the moment. And if I connect that up to it um, through the transformer, it'll chase you out of the house yeah. on, with a pair of 6v6s <laughs> in it yeah. uh, and the audio output push-pull. And it sounds brilliant on the old AM um, station from Auckland. Yeah. Which I put the four square on it and uh, yeah. sounds magic. <laughs> Susie keeps telling yeah. me to turn it down. Keep turning it down, <laughs> keep turning it down. Yeah. Well, thanks, Nick. Really appreciate uh, your time uh, today mm. and having mm. a look in around. I, I know a lot of people are going to be really interested in what uh, that four square because. Uh, I guess you know that's every amateur's dream, to be honest, to have a have a four square sitting out in the backyard, mm. and that's um, and for you guys that are up in the UK, you know, with your uh, uh, small yeah. uh, gardens and so on, like that, yeah, okay, uh, it's just have to look on and then be appreciate that. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> there what there spurred is. me on with the four square was um, Mike Edwards used to, and David used to needle me all the time get my act together, and Bill Hosey was VK6CCY, living in Aust right. Western Australia, and Marion Island was on. Yeah. And I had a single vertical, yeah. and I could tell he was there, he could hear me perfectly, but I couldn't get the report ZS8, and of course I needed ZS8. Yeah, right. And I, I just didn't want to guess the report, I thought no, and anyway, I missed it, and that made me think, <laughs> you're a chump. Yeah. Should have had the four square. <laughs> so I got out there and I got my mate, the surveyor, to come from work. And he surveyed exactly where the, the four verticals were to go. And I told him the angle I wanted them on, the direction. And it cost me a bottle of rum. And yep. I went to work and installed the ground system. And then Bob and I built the elements and, and yeah, yeah. All right. spurred into action by... Yeah. Now, Mike, <laughs> uh, the mic that we refer to used to be Z01BIL. is yeah. now Z01HW. Uh, HY, uh, yeah. HY, that's yep. right. And uh, you don't hear Mike on the band much, but... Uh, no, uh, he's he's Mike. moved into town. David's yeah. moved into town, sadly. David, what's David's call? 1GQ. 1GQ. Golf Quebec, yeah. David was always on. 
And many of us actually have moved uh, from country locations uh, back into town. So, uh, but but back in the day, uh, we all used, were all sparring partners, and uh, yeah. Not any sparring partners, but good buddies. So we uh, helped each other um, achieve some of the achievements that we had. Uh, it's I know, a, um, it's a lot of fun. I know Mike, uh, myself, um, ZL3 GQ, and a few others. We were uh, uh, fighting tooth and nail for the five band DXCC when it first came out and things like that. And so, but. Not only fighting tooth and nail, but uh, also helping each other along, spearing each other along. And, uh, so yeah. maybe the, uh, having a look at Nick's four square and what he's achieved here from everything from uh, 1296 down to uh, <laughs> 80 metres, <laughs> uh, uh, maybe that'll inspire some of you to, uh, uh, to give it a go and uh, see what can, can be done. I, if I get a tower up this season, I'll get on 160. There you and go. That'll, that'll make me forced me to improve my CW. Well, you got enough room here to yep. get up on 160, yep. haven't you? Yep. For sure. I want to get on top band because yeah. I hear the Africans on there and um, on single side band, I've even heard them on 160. Yeah. Yep. Wow. So on a few occasions. And um, so I need to uh, get on get my CW back up the speed and work a few of them or, yeah. or attempt to. Yeah. Yep. Well, Nick. Thank you very much, mate. Cheers, Wally. I, yep. I appreciate Thanks. it. And, uh, and, uh, you were the one that stuck with me with the, uh, encouraged me to get the ticket. <laughs> Indeed. I'll, I'll never forget that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was a good time, so it's, yeah, yep. it was great time. it certainly was. Well, I hope you enjoyed that uh, visit with Nick, Z01 Italy United. And uh, uh, I learned a few things from uh, anywhere from 1296 all the way down to 80 metres. Those of you who are in Australia, please listen for Nick on uh, 1296 and, ab and above. Uh, he'll be around uh, anytime there's any openings, that's uh, for sure. And those of you who are in the uh, UK and um, USA and so on like that, Nick is regularly on 80 metres. Uh, you'll hear him. <laughs> there's no two ways about it. You'll hear Nick for sure. So if you're looking for ZL on 80 metres, uh, Nick uh, ZL1, Italy United would be one of your great choices. Now listen, while you're there, have a look at uh, Nick's page on QRZ. Uh, there's a couple of surprises there too that you might like to um, uh, discover for yourself. Uh, so um, uh, there's some uh, links on uh, Nick's page for the Foursquare that which you'll be interested in. And there's other one, one or two other little surprises there as well. Now, if you've enjoyed the series so far, uh, please subscribe and uh, click the little bell. That way I can notify you when I uh, visit uh, the next ham on my journey around New Zealand as we uh, travel around New Zealand visiting the hams and seeing what they're up to. So until then... Bye for now.